Hey there, thanks for watching. I've just come back from Cambodia where I spent a week visiting the tropical island of Koh Rong, taking in the relaxed vibes of Kam Pot and walking the lively streets of the capital Phnom Penh. I first visited Cambodia as a backpacker 20 years ago, back when Sihanoukville was a sleepy beachside haven with guest house rooms for $5 a night. And when the 300 kilometer or so bus trip from Phnom Penh to Siem Reap, home of the mesmerizing Angkor Wat temple complex, took nine bone jarring hours on pothole roads and dilapidated war ravaged bridges. Times have clearly changed though. This was my first time back since then, despite having lived next door in Vietnam for well over a decade. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my experiences and perspectives on transportation in Cambodia, which will hopefully help you with your own travel plans if you're thinking about taking a trip here. Okay, let's get into it. As I briefly mentioned in the intro, I live in Vietnam, which shares a border with Cambodia. In fact, by land, the Mok Bai border crossing is just 60 kilometers northwest of Ho Chi Minh City. However, for this trip, I was keen to kick it off on the southern island of Koh Rong. And in order to get there, we needed to catch a speedboat for a 30 minute ride out to the island from Sihanoukville in southern Cambodia. So we flew to Sihanoukville from Ho Chi Minh City with Cambodia Angkor Air on their super fun ATR-72 twin turboprop aircraft. Flying time is approximately an hour and because the ATR-72 on this leg flies at just 15,000 feet, the views are pretty amazing. But you'll pay for these views. Because Cambodia Angkor Air, of which incidentally Vietnam Airlines owns 49%, is the only airline flying into Sihanoukville from Vietnam, it means higher than usual airfares. Before taxes, our tickets cost a whopping 215 US dollars per person one way. Likewise, at the end of our trip, we flew from Phnom Penh back to Ho Chi Minh City. Before taxes, our tickets cost 123 US dollars each. Yes, we could have come by bus from Phnom Penh home at a much, much cheaper rate, but when the flight takes less than an hour, departing at 7 a.m. and meaning we would be back in the door at home by 9 a.m., it was just too good to refuse. All in all, costs aside, <laughs> I loved flying in and out of Cambodia. And Cambodia Angkor Air is good too. Try and keep an eye out for discounted flights though to ease the turbulence in your wallet. Now ferries and speedboats aren't exactly everyone's cup of chai, especially out in open water, where things can get pretty choppy pretty quickly. I love them, I just wish I could say the same for my wife. You ready Mel? Okay. I'm dizzy already. But the only way to get to Koh Rong, as far as I know, is to take a 30 minute speedboat from the Sihanoukville Autonomous Port. I booked our tickets via baolao.com, which I've always found to be convenient and reliable. But what I was quickly beginning to discover about Cambodia in 2023 is that things have become quite expensive for mid-range travelers like us. Ticket prices to Koh Rong vary depending on the time of the week. And because we were traveling on a Saturday, a one-way ticket costs 25 US dollars. But there's always a but, isn't there? There are ticketing service fees added on top. There's a ticketing service fee of $1 per ticket, then a 50 cent referral service fee per ticket because I'd click through to baolao.com via an affiliate link. Why the cost was borne by me, I don't know, but I've contacted them for an explanation. So let's see what happens. And on top of that, there's a $3.45 processing fee, which brought the cost of two tickets one way to the island to $56.45. See, things are starting to add up. Of course, presumably at some point, you're gonna wanna get off the island, which we naturally did. But because we returned on a Tuesday, fares were significantly cheaper at $28 for two adults. And after adding those pesky service fees, 
the total came to $33. Nevertheless, the service was excellent, the waters and islands are pretty stunning, and the trip affords you with some amazing views of Sihanoukville, both ways. One thing that needs to be mentioned though, is that elderly and disabled travellers will find this service extremely challenging, especially getting in and out of the boats. Plus boats heading out to the islands tend to take supplies for businesses out there, leaving the boats cramped for space. So keep that in mind when planning your trip. I also can't remember seeing any toilet facilities on board, except for over the side of the boat. But all in all, I loved it. I don't know what it is that draws us to train travel, perhaps the cheapness of it, perhaps we see it as an opportunity to mingle and interact with the locals, or perhaps it just gives us a way of getting off the roads, where in Southeast Asia, they can be extremely dangerous, especially in developing countries. Cambodia is no different. We did two legs of our trip by train this time round, from Sihanoukville to Kampot, and then Kampot to Phnom Penh. Again, I purchased our tickets via baolao.com and for the two hour journey to Kampot, it was a very reasonable $12 for two tickets. But you know what I'm gonna say next, right? With the added service fees on top of those blasted referral fees, our tickets came to approximately $17.30. For the four hour journey from Kampot to Phnom Penh, our tickets cost us $18 for two, and once those extra service fees were added, it came to approximately $24. Like Vietnam, there's really only one railway line servicing all of Cambodia. And while services on the ground at stations are very basic, think no vending machines, air con or clean amenities, it's an interesting and cost effective way to travel. And what makes train travel in Cambodia even better is the use of these odd looking Mexican made diesel locomotives that might be better described as rail buses or trams even. I don't know how that relationship came about between Mexico and Cambodia. They seem like odd bedfellows, but it works. They're comfortable, air conditioned and safe. Although at times the rickety old track in some sections along the way may have you grabbing for the armrest. I highly recommend it though. It's a great way to view the ever-changing scenery along the way, which in parts is stunning, especially as the train draws nearer to Kampot. On both legs to Kampot and to Phnom Penh, the trains were on time, no fuss, comfortable, and they never got crowded. Just do it. Well, what can be said about Cambodian taxis and tuk-tuks in 2023 that hasn't already been said on other channels? Well, much has changed in Cambodia in the past two decades, these pests haven't. Although the vehicles they drive have been significantly upgraded since I visited last. There are two kinds of tuk-tuks, one drawn by a motorbike that's a bit more traditional and a more suitable for sightseeing. <laughs> They're actually quite spacious and comfortable, while the other ones look to be molded from carbon fiber and run on LPG. By and large, our experiences with cabbies and tuk-tuk drivers was fine, but they're really smiling thieves, aren't they? I get that they're only trying to make a living at a time when tourism in Cambodia is spluttering back to life, but there's gotta be a better way of going about touting your services. But it's not all their fault. As an example, prior to our trip, I was told in a Facebook travel group that taxis from Sihanoukville International Airport to Sihanoukville Autonomous Port were about $25. We ended up getting one for $22, but afterwards we found out that the going rate is just $15. No fault of the cabbie, probably more of the groups, where people are providing outdated or incorrect information. As for tuk-tuks, they'll definitely push the pricing envelope and your buttons by quoting outrageous prices. As an example, one tuk-tuk driver wanted $15 to take us from Phnom Penh railway station to our hotel just two kilometers away. In the end, we settled on five bucks, which was still probably too much. In Phnom Penh especially, they'll also try to sell you tour packages and tell you that the Royal Palace is closed to try to coerce you into changing your plans and taking a tour with them. 
Now, there are a number of ride hailing apps you can use while in Cambodia, like Grab and Pass App. However, because we were in Cambodia for just a week, and planned not to use taxis and tuk-tuks much, it wasn't a priority for us. Although, we did try to use Grab for a taxi from Sihanoukville International Airport to the port to catch the speedboat, but for whatever reason, it wouldn't accept our credit card for payment, so we just abandoned it and took a taxi that was already waiting. Whichever way you want to hail and pay for tuk-tuks, by all means use them. They're great to get around in, and there's tons of them. I guess in the absence of a public bus system, at least I can't remember seeing a public bus the whole time, you probably don't really have much of a choice anyway. Just keep your wits about you and be firm, but polite. So there you have it, some of the transport options available to you during a visit to Cambodia. All up, I found getting around simple and convenient, and for the most part, affordable. And the itinerary we followed lent itself to opportunities to try them all, without having to go out of our way. What was my favourite? I'd have to say the train, how could it not be? Just be aware though that when you're booking, you may not end up on the contraption that we travelled on as there are more conventional trains plying those routes. If you're really keen on taking the one I rode, it might be a good idea to get in touch with baolao.com directly for scheduling. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I know that making travel plans can be an anxiety riddled experience, so I hope I've alleviated some of that anxiety in some way. If you have any questions about transportation or my experiences in Cambodia, be sure to drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Alternatively, feel free to join my Facebook group, just search the Bureau Asia group on Facebook and you can reach me there. I'm also on Instagram, at the Bureau Asia. There are over 2,500 active members in the Facebook group, so there's a good chance someone in there will be able to answer your questions if I can't. Thank you again for watching. Keep an eye out for upcoming videos on my trip to Cambodia, including ones about my life here in Vietnam. See you in the next one.